Actor Michael Cera is well known for his awkward, offbeat, and funny characters in coming-of-age comedy movies. And if you didn't know, he's Canadian. Despite growing up in Brampton, Ontario in a simple semi-detached house with his family, these days after making it in Hollywood, he's moved across the border. In 2019, Sarah picked up a charming $2 million plus townhouse in Brooklyn, New York, where he resides to this day. We'll explore his journey from his Canadian childhood in Brampton to his beautiful Brooklyn abode. Born on June 7th, 1988, Michael Sarah, known for his iconic roles in movies like Superbad, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, and TV shows like Arrested Development, has captured hearts with his unique brand of humor. His stellar performance in Superbad earned him the prestigious 2008 Canadian Comedy Award for Best Male Performance. He has definitely carved a niche for himself in Hollywood, distinguishing himself among all of the other mainstream actors with his own comedic style. His journey began as a child actor lending his voice to Brother Bear in the children's TV show The Bernstein Bears and portraying a young Chuck Barris in Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Early successes, including his memorable stint in Arrested Development, paved the way for Sarah's transition into adult roles in blockbuster Hollywood productions. Fans adore his geeky, charming, and perpetually awkward characters, often wondering if these roles are merely extensions of Sarah himself. His relatable persona endears him to audiences, making us want more of his charm on screen. Born in Brampton, Ontario, Michael Sarah's journey started in this Canadian city. Despite his success, Sarah maintains a deep connection to Brampton, once declaring it as his true home. The childhood residence of this talented actor boasts three bedrooms and three bathrooms, a humble yet nurturing environment where his passion for acting first took root. In 2019, as Michael Sarah's Broadway career flourished, he embarked on a new chapter, purchasing a remarkable $2.4 million townhouse in Brooklyn, New York. Situated on a serene, tree-lined street near the Clinton Hill-Bedford border, this residence reflects Sarah's preference for more modest luxury. This four-bedroom townhouse constructed in 1899 exudes timeless charm, retaining original features like wide plank floors, marble mantles, and a mahogany staircase railing and banister. The historical allure harmonizes with Sarah's own endearing personality. Sarah's abode is a versatile two-unit townhouse offering a landscape garden and terrace. The upper triplex with four beds and two bathrooms opens to the serene garden through a terrace. Additionally, a one-bedroom, one-bath apartment in the garden level provides both privacy and rental potential. The kitchen in the townhouse has undergone a thoughtful renovation, blending modern convenience with the historic charm that defines the rest of the house. This update, along with all of its new modern appliances, ensures that Sarah can effortlessly whip up his favorite dishes for himself and friends. This picturesque, historic area known as Clinton Hill has experienced the meticulous restoration of its many elegant historic mansions and townhomes, as well as an emergence of an array of exceptional restaurants and boutique stores. With its grand trees, exquisite brownstone homes, and charming small shops, Clinton Hill Bedstuit Border provides an ambiance that transports you far from the bustling streets of Manhattan. Also once a home to Jay-Z, Bedstuit is still considered an up-and-coming neighborhood in Brooklyn that remains pretty celebrity-free. In the homes Michael Sarah's chosen, we witness a reflection of his character, humble yet brimming with charm and individuality. His Brampton childhood home laid the groundwork for his illustrious career, while his Brooklyn townhouse is steeped in history and warmth, and reveals his affection for New York City. Sarah says New York has always been in the back of his mind. He loves the look and feeling of New York and the energy of it, saying, I always loved New York. I always wanted to live here since I was a kid. How could you find a cooler place to live? Exploring these spaces that have left a mark on Michael Sarah's life encourages us to reflect on our own homes and the stories they tell us. Much like Sarah's beloved on-screen characters, our homes often reveal deeper facets of our identities than we may even realize. And there you have it. A fascinating glimpse into the world of Michael Sarah from his humble beginnings in Brampton to his charming Brooklyn townhouse. 
But before you go, I'd love to hear from you. How have your own roots and the places you've lived impacted your life choices and the way that you relate to the world around you? Be sure to share your thoughts with me in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Feel free to follow me on Instagram to chat. And if you would like to check out another video before you go, then stay tuned for this look into the homes of Aubrey Plaza. Bye. When you think of Aubrey Plaza, odds are you can't help but picture her as the quirky, larger than life character April Ludgate from the hit sitcom Parks and Recreation. And if that isn't the first time you really remember her, then maybe it was more recently on the second season of HBO's The White Lotus. With a personality as out there as Aubrey's, you'd probably expect her to be living in some eccentric home that's as in your face as she can sometimes be. But the truth of the matter is Aubrey's home is not nearly that loud. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year. So go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. After getting her start as an actress in the late 2000s, Aubrey would pay right around $1.6 million for a home located in the Hollywood Hills, one that she would come to share a few years later with her eventual husband, Jeff Bina. Now, keeping with her on-screen persona versus her actual personality, Aubrey almost never updates her fans about her home life or her relationship, probably because she doesn't see it as being all that different from anyone else's. While speaking about her partner in 2013, she once told Cosmopolitan, he's a creative person and we understand each other on that level. When we're together, we like hanging out at home. We're happy having people over and playing Settlers of Catan or Battlestar Galactica. And from what we did manage to dig up about Aubrey's former Hollywood Hills address, it certainly doesn't sound like she's lying. While speaking with the UK newspaper, The Guardian, the media outlet made special note of a deluxe edition of Scrabble just sitting on her kitchen table the entire time. In fact, according to a recent interview with GQ, these two even met over a game of balderdash. So one thing's for sure, Aubrey and her hubby absolutely love their board games. While this Hollywood couple may go above and beyond to keep their private life exactly that, the one thing Aubrey regularly posts updates about are her dogs, and I can't blame her. They're both adorable pooches. Beyond just her affection for these four-legged critters, Aubrey also has an eye for collecting. Just probably not what you'd expect, because if this image is anything to go by, Aubrey isn't out there collecting shoes or Louis Vuitton bags. Instead, she's a big time DVD and Blu-ray collector. When you put that together, with her obvious love for board games, it all kind of makes sense, right? I mean, Aubrey even relishes dressing up for Halloween, which we can see from this image, also gives us a taste of her surprisingly narrow bare bones kitchen with all white cabinets and a couple small sections of marble countertop. But the most exciting thing to ever happen in the confines of this home went down during the lockdown when Aubrey and Jeff decided to marry one another on a whim. And I'm talking within the span of a single hour. Here's how she explained it to Ellen. OneHourMarriage.com. That's real. Look it up. As it turns out, OneHourMarriage.com is apparently a thing that exists. Aubrey also managed to smooth talk the efficient into driving two hours out of his way to perform the ceremony in the couple's own backyard on the anniversary of their first date. Following which, Plaza said that she went across the street to see her neighbor, someone that she claims is a real life witch just to get her blessing. I created a very quick love altar in my yard. Facts of our love, smoke, fire, things of that nature. Despite hosting a landmark life event right in her very own home, a little over a year later, Aubrey and Jeff would decide to buy a new house together, which left Plaza to list this abode for $2.25 million in August, 2022. She'd find a buyer within just weeks and shortly thereafter, move into a brand new residence. 
When Aubrey and Jeff sold their old home, they didn't have all that far to move. Instead, they upgraded to a pristine and elegant Spanish style mansion located just down the street. That's right, in October 2022, Aubrey and Jeff dropped $4.7 million on a different home, but in the very same residential neighborhood of Hollywood Hills. Both her former residence and this new one were originally constructed way back in the 1920s, but Aubrey's newest digs are much bigger and fancier than what she had before. Situated behind Behind large walls and gates on a quarter acre block of land, this three story home is only a few minutes from Griffith Park. Exteriors offer stucco and a terracotta roof, and it sits on a front yard surrounded by mature trees. Inside, you'll find four bedrooms and six bathrooms spread across a little more than 4,000 square feet of fully restored and glamorous living space. The home is full of grand scale rooms, oak floors, high ceilings, arched doorways, wood sash windows, and seamless transitions between indoor outdoor spaces. When you enter the home, a portico topped front door opens to a tiled foyer, which almost immediately steps down into a living room, sporting a whitewashed wood beam ceiling, a brick fireplace, and picture windows that let in a ton of LA sun. Then there's the nearby formal dining room with French doors spilling out the exterior garden, a space we'll circle back to in just a moment. There's also the gourmet kitchen that's been done up with all white cabinets, marble countertops, an apron style sink, stainless steel appliances, dual walk-in pantries, a snack bar island, and most importantly, access to the outdoor dining patio overlooking the property's koi pond. Rounding out the main floor is a cozy den, which will no doubt become the go-to spot to play all those board games that these two enjoy so much, as well as an office that boasts would be ceilings and bookshelves. To get upstairs, you can check out the Magnesite staircase that still has all of its original ironwork from the 20s. On the top floor, there's a spacious master suite with a pair of walk-in closets, as well as a bathroom that includes a claw foot soaking tub and separate shower. Three further ensuite bedrooms can also be found up here on the top floor, one of which could easily be transformed into a media room, and another that comes equipped with a sunroom as well as a porch. As for the lowest level, it connects to an attached two car garage, and there's even a climate controlled wine room as well, alongside plenty of storage space. Last but not least is Aubrey's new backyard, a space that's not only big enough to host a massive in ground pool, but also have enough room left over for a giant cabana that's steam shower ready. Having lived in her former house for roughly four years, how long will Aubrey and Jeff call this new place home? Who knows for sure, but considering how much nicer it is here, maybe this will be the spot where these two finally start a family of their own. Something that was apparently put on hold after the madness of the past couple years had Aubrey concerned about the future of humanity. Of course, considering these two literally just moved in a few weeks ago, maybe I should give them a little time to get settled before I plan out their next 20 or so years. Especially considering that Aubrey's only more or less just returned from spending five months holed up at the Four Seasons San Domenico Palace while shooting season two of of the White Lotus. And stay tuned if you want to see more of that spot. And if you want to see more of that spot though, stay tuned because we will be having a video on that place itself. In the meantime, I sure hope that Aubrey's new home is everything that she wants it to be. All right, that'll wrap up this latest house tour. But before you head out, do me a favor and answer this one question. If the world at large assumed you were one way at home because of how you come across in movies and TV, would you keep it a secret if you were really nothing like your on-screen personality? Let me know what you would do in that situation in the comments down below or maybe another house tour you'd like to see on this channel. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I will see you all in another one. Bye!